अच्छा ये एक और क्वेश्चन है इफ़ यू वॉन्ट टू चैलेंज साइंस ट्राई बिगिनिंग विद हैविंग एन एनी अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द साइंस लेट्स टेक फॉर अ सिंपल एग्जाम्पल उन्होंने कोट किया है ट्वेंटी वन पे जो हमारी वीडियो है उसी पे वन दिट दिस सेल डिवेलप द ब्रेन फॉर सींग द फ्यूचर सो इट कैन अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू अडेप्ट ओनली सम वन दैट हैज़ नो अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ एवोल्यूशन एंड बायोलॉजी वुड आस सच एन इन सेन क्वेश्चन द सेल डजेंट नीड अ ब्रेन डजेंट नीड टू सी द फ्यूचर डजेंट नीड टू नो हाउ टू अडेप्ट Each time a cell divides, or in other words, every member of every population in every generation has several mutations. None are identical clones of their parental cell. Yeah, my question is understood. ठीक. असल में ना ये this is a problem. पहले तो मैं आपको I'm I'm going to go a little technical. मैं जान के technicality में नहीं जाता because this channel is not a learning the science of things. है this is channel is to argument the philosophy. Uh, लेकिन मैं आपको क्योंकि इन्होंने क्वेश्चन पूछा है सो आई एम गोइंग टू गो इन टू अ लिटल टेक्निकलिटी कि मैं क्या कह रहा था उस बाय द वे उस वीडियो में कॉन्टेक्चुअल क्वेश्चन है कि वेन डी द सेल डेवलप द ब्रेन टू लुक इन टू द फ्यूचर का मतलब है कि मैं जिस कॉन्टेक्स में ये बात कर रहा हूँ वो है सिमिट्री ऑफ द मेल एंड फीमेल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट यूल हैव टू लिस टू दीडियो ओवर एंड ओवर अगेन आप सम, समझ जाएंगे फ्यूचर का मतलब ये है कि हाउ would you possibly put a a timeline where the unicellular or even a you know a single cell to understand how to actually diversify itself into a lock and key uh male and female which fit so perfectly with each other uh let me just go into a little technicality because this is a question of biology and uh when you are actually creating a context when somebody is creating a context to uske baad ek basic sawal hi puchna padta hai so that people can actually be reeled in together main aapko iska uh jo hai na serial bata deta hu so that you can understand what my question what my argument is when it comes down to biology the whole gener- uh, the linear equation of evolution is very simply defined well as simple as they could make it that it is from a the phylum periphera to phylum chordata now phylum periphera is the initiation and now we are phylum you know we are chordates with specifically peculiarly different female and a peculiarly different male now this is a preposterous assumption when you actually start to plot a journey from a periphera to a chordata in terms of its reproduction capability or technique of reproduction i'll go a little lower uh deeper mitosis is a way more efficient or let's just not go into that kind of detail asexual reproduction is way more efficient way more evident in periphera then uh, sexual reproduction where we have more than a 99 to 1% ratio of how uh, you know these organisms reproduce asexually to an exception of sexual reproduction however in chordates the sexual reproduction is way more prevalent than asexual actually i'm talking about the whole animalia so there is a a a, a phylum a, a a graph on which you can plot of how magnificent this 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 uh this type of reproduction is i'm talking about the sexual reproduction now since there is a big contradiction between how sexual reproduction started from a prokaryote prokaryote uh jiski do contradictory theory hai main zyada tafseel mein jaye baghair aapko bata dun ek jo ke homologous chiasma ki theory hai aur ek hai facultative parthenogenesis ye dono abhi tak ladai kar rahe hain कि कैसे माइटोसिस से मियोसिस का सफ़र हुआ एक सिंगल सेल के अंदर और अगर समझ ले मियोसिस हो भी रहा था कि अमिटोजेनेसिस तो एक सिंगल एनिमल के अंदर भी हो सकती है एंड वी हैव यू नो ट्रांसजेंडर्स टू प्रूव दैट हाउ दोनों दोनों जेनेटेलिया uh, एक ही ऑर्गेनिज्म के अंदर हो सकते हैं एंड दे कैन रिप्रोड्यूस दम इवन दो इट वुड बी ए सेक्शुअल यू नो एज वी कैन सी इट बट इट विल बी अ वेरी सेक्शुअल प्रोसेस going within the organism now 
understand what I'm trying to tell you so that you can understand of how to look at it scientifically and academically so that you would not think that it is just a, a layman's perspective when I'm talking about the argument of biology against evolution. Imagine this, a single cellular peripheral ka phylum, a cell ka organism is starting to replicate and it is adapting to the environment so much, so much so that there are billions and trillions of, you know, multicellular organisms. And after a, a, a little more million years, give me like 10 more, 100 more million years, these multicellular organisms are becoming blobs now. What I'm trying to ask you is a simple question. This blob is actually capable of understanding that there is, since it's an asymmetric organism, it has to create a symmetric, two identifiably different uh, male and female of its own genome and they are going to combine together to start the reproductive cycle and the survival of the species. And that's a big, that's why I said it, it, would, it should take hundreds of trillions of years for that kind of chance to happen. Now, from a blob, you can actually expect that it had the brains. Now, that's what my question was, that a single cellular animal had the brains to look at the future, that I need a symmetrical uh, pair of my own organism, which is going to mate together sexually, even though all of this is asexual coming about, and it is going to uh, maintain the species uh, through this process. Now, this is such an amazing assumption that unless you're suffering from a psychologically uh, a self-serving bias, which more Darwinistic people do, and they actually go into the bacteria and then, see, then they see that there is a sexual process going in, a, a, a sexual reproduction uh, going on in bac at a bacterial level, and then they extrapolate it to literally to primates. Now, this is what my argument is. That at, the, at what stage of this organism, when it was a blob, it started to identify the need of a totally different female and a totally different male of, an, of the perfect symmetry to run around this planet. And on top of that, when this process is going to happen, there is going to be an oxytocic, dopaminergic and vasopressic reaction, which is going to give them pleasure. All of a sudden, this blob is actually estimating all of those, you know, algorithms that we need a process. For that, we need two different uh, uh, families of individuals, even though in, I know it's the same family, but when it comes down to anatomy, it's a totally different structure that the female has. I'm talking about the reproductive organ, organs only, and the male has. So I'm purposely not trying to use crude terminology here, so bear with me. This blob has the foresight to run the algorithms to create this sort of mechanism, which is in all primates. I'm talking about across the board. That's what my actual argument is. And this is such a big problem that this sort of pleasure from a sexual reproductive cycle is a cherry on the cake that some blob thought about it and now we, the, this is one of the biggest games, well actually the only game that was, that has been played since Adam till the last man, that this is such a pleasurable and perfectly symmetrical and the core reason of survival of the species. This is why I said that this, this is such a preposterous argument because it is not as efficient as an asexual reproductive cycle. We might as well have been just producing our own babies from our own selves. That is very evident in ants. It is, I'm talking about the animals here. Very evident in ants and even in some insects as well. Why couldn't we do it? And since they're sur sur uh, suffering from a self-serving bias, they, whenever it comes down to asexual reproduction, they all of a sudden go to the exception and they actually use ants as, in, as an example since they are using asexual reproduction, you know, and ants are in billions and billions, trillions actually, uh, this, the, the anthropods are the only dominant species on this planet. If we have to choose one species and call this, this planet's, you know, uh, owner, that would be anthropods, not primates. 
we are less than you know four or four zeros behind the decimal when it comes down to the comparison behind uh, or, uh, orthopods so they are still reproducing asexually all of a sudden primates come in and they start having sex and they get the the, the you know the whole argument based on the fact that the survival of the species is based on this one act alone even though from periphera to anthropoda we do not have this sort of dominance of sexual reprodu sexually reproducing organisms this is what the argument is and this is why after listening to all of this i'm sure you now can understand and any anyone who's listening to this that i don't go in technicality of science because these sort of arguments are useless for a, for for the general population L Forget understanding the argument. They can't even use it even if they understand it just to try and settle that Iman inside that, yeah, you know what, there is no evolution. That's why I said it is just a, it's, it's such a, you know, a, a waste of time and a big distraction when it comes down to this. And people who do not know biology, they just uh, think that anything that the biologist or scientist is saying is true. Just because some scientist says something stupid does not make this thing scientific it'll always remain stupid or baseless or naive or wrong even if somebody who is at a credible level with a lot of books behind him is saying that so this is something which which uh, which uh, when i said oh a single cellular animal had the brains to see in the future and see where the survival of the species is going to be and he had to adapt and create the perfect symmetry of genitalia the process and the chemistry which is going to lead towards them coming together all the time i hope this clarifies this uh this uh this 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 little commotion going on in your brain